anyway. You, you tell, no, no, thank you. Oh my God, I'm I can't breathe. What's the problem? Everything. You do nothing. Yeah. It's not the problem. It was funny. You. It was not good. It was not good last week. My heart goes out to that. You know, there was a time when you didn't watch shit like that. You don't pay attention to shit like that. But now, since it's everywhere, it's all over you. You gotta fucking. You got to read a little bit and see what's going on. You know, I don't believe in nobody anymore. You know, first they said he shot 40 people. Then it went down to 22. Then it went down to 18. You know, and I know in the beginning, the, the numbers aren't accurate. But my heart goes out to that, that place don't deserve a fucking lunatic like that. No. But they got those people. It's like when I, I was thinking about when I first went to Colorado. When I was 19, I met fucking dudes out there that eventually they were going to shoot somebody like with an AR. There was a lot of Vietnam vets when I got to Aspen. And I really thought about it after I left, I really got tight with two of them. I got tight with two Vietnam vets, one in basalt or oh, where did he live? Yeah. He lived in basalt close to Aspen. And then when I moved to Boulder, I met a guy and I was friends with him till the day I'd gotten that car and left. And he did, he like, how, how did they remind you of the mass shooter? Listen, you could tell that they were a little unstable. You know, they had to go to the VA. They were on medication. Some of them had an Agent Orange. And they had issues. They were too young when they got shipped over there. And the Vietnam guys really saw some fucking wild shit. You know, I listen, I wasn't there. I was, I was a young kid. I, could, I was in Cuba. Yeah, I wasn't there. But, I, you know, I talked to this guy a lot. And none of, the, none of those Vietnam dudes I never did cocaine with. Why? They smoked weed and they drank. You know, they didn't do coke like that. And, then, and they told me about what happened. They would tell me little things, you know. You see a lot, man. That's you traumatic. Know. 18. I don't care how they train you. You know, the mind is the mind. You know, so. You know, it's, it, it's, in, it's interesting you say it, though, because my, like, my mom is still, she watches the news like three times a day. And it was on right before we started. And the CBS News was doing a story about how, like, there's a statistic, they see a trend of people who do mass shootings, there's a trend of, like, a certain percentage of them have a military background, and they were like, it was, I couldn't believe they had it on the news, because that's going to piss off everybody, but then B, like, it, I can't imagine going through, like, being a soldier, like, I can't imagine, like, I, Every day, like I, I'm amazed more people don't have like panic attacks and freak out. Like it, it doesn't make it doesn't surprise me that like people who go through that terrible shit have issues that we don't do like anything about, which is crazy. But you know, when you see something traumatic, right? When you you walk in New York City and some guy on a bike gets hit by a car, you know, you giggle, you walk a little bit, he's on, <laughs> uh, uh, you know. No helmet on, so it's not going to be a good fucking thing. You're not going to see that every day. Unless you're in the city every day, your percentages are higher that one of these bike guys in the city gets hit by a truck or something. You know, it, it happens. But that's one day that I saw that. Let's say I saw his head blow up. Let's say I saw a building land on him or whatever. That's one day. And that could do a lot of damage to you. My heart yeah. goes out to you if you ever witnessed that in any level. But to see it every day for a year or six months, to live under that pressure, you know, and then to get out of it, it's it's a big, it's like you got a fucking air tank and it's filled and you're like, <laughs> deflate it, and you don't know where that balloon's going to land. You know, so. That's a crazy way to describe. I've never heard it described like that, but it's. it's true. You know, like I said, I really was interested in those guys. All three of those guys that I became friends with, I really taught the world of. One guy used to sleep at his house on Friday nights, and I would hang out with him. I'd smoke dope with his wife. We'd watch movies. You know, we'd talk about weapons. He took me to shoot, you know. So it was always uh, I, I, when I skied. When I first got up there, the guy who owned the Mason Company was also a Vietnam vet. But he was like a good looking blonde haired guy. You know, he was all right. He was a ski champion. Like he had okay. one something, you know, and he was back home. He was originally from the area, but he seemed normal. He was running a business and that, you know, Hey, listen, 
that's a that's a good little percentage there. You know, I have no fucking idea. It's when they go in, like you ask them to like oh, swap oh, it. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. My wife made pasta fazool for lunch with like triple garlic in it. I've been farting, knocking myself out. I must have passed out three times this afternoon from the garlic. Oh, Jesus Christ. You see me in my sleep apnea mask. It got in? What? It made it into your sleep apnea mask? Yeah, I took a nap this afternoon. So when I woke up, I'm like, what the fuck is this garlic smell in this mask? I had to soak it in Listerine and brush my teeth and take a shower, get that garlic effect out of me. But anyway, yeah. why are we talking about garlic here? What are you, a vegetarian? What else is going on, cocksucker? Some dude who ate a scoop and a bagel. Listen, man, what can I tell you? I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know these people. I don't know what they're talking about, a scoop and a bagel. I'm an old man. I go get a bagel maybe once a week. Sometimes I put that hot jalapeno spread on it, a little turkey, a little Swiss cheese, a tomato. Stop it. That's it? So, But you don't ask them to scoop the innards of the bagel out? like the? No, no. I never take the middle out. If you anybody takes the middle out, I take it out of Italian bread, rip it out of there, and then put a stick of butter on that motherfucker and put it down like a little Super Bowl with the butter in the middle, and I just pop that motherfucker. That's how you eat bread, the guts. People used to tell me when I was a kid I was going to get sick when I got older from eating all the guts out of bread, but I don't well, give a fuck. This guy's not eating it. He's taking it and throwing it away. I know. What are you going to do? These people are mooks. Why do you even bother me with these people? Well, when I lived in LA, you'd go in and say, let me get a gluten-free fucking bagel. Let me tell you something. I own a place in the Bronx, and you come in and ask me for a gluten-free bagel. Like, I'm at this age. I just got, like, a fucking torture chamber downstairs. Why? Because I'm going to put everybody who fucked with me, I'll put them downstairs like uh, like that Hannibal. What's that movie? Silence of the Lambs. Where you used to yeah. tie up the chubby chicks in the basement and shit and give them cream to rub on them and stuff. I put every, anybody who comes in with a goofy fucking, can I get goat's milk in the coffee? Sure. <laughs> I got a goat downstairs. Let's go see it. You can milk it. Here, bring your kid too. 